Friends, we begin today Song of Solomon, and there's a, there's a major interpretive question that we have to address as soon as we get into this book, No Better Time Than the Present. And that question is, is this book, Song of Solomon, primarily intended to be for husband and wife? Is that really what this is all about, that relationship? Or are we to interpret this in terms of Christ and the church? My answer to that question is that it's, it's about both. That here we have this royal husband and his bride. And there, there's plenty in there that's of great use to husbands and wives that are seeking uh, to have inspiration uh, for their lives from the scriptures. Plenty in there that we can learn. But ultimately, with the Puritans and so many other commentators throughout church history, uh, I'm convinced that this royal husband uh, is, is really telling us about our Savior and our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to be his holy bride. One day we'll be glorious without any spot or blemish, we're told. And so let's get right at it now. And it, it starts in, in this first chapter with the, the opening line, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Then uh, because of the Hebrew grammar, we're able to tell who's speaking at each point. So this is the woman, and she begins with this. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your name is oil poured out. Therefore, virgins love you. Draw me after you. Let us run. The king has brought me into his chambers. This See, this kind of literature is a little different than some of the other things that we have in various books of the Bible. This is a love poetry here. It's not so much a storyline, though there is a storyline in it, but it's more the experience of going through this wonderful language of love. And what is, what is the, the bride saying here? But she, look, she adores her husband. She, she loves the love that her husband has for her. Then others, there, there's not only she and, and he in here, but also there, there are others that are at certain points al along the way able to be a community of observers. And it says this, we will exalt you and rejoice in you. We will extol your love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. The, so there's like a chorus of others around that are agreeing with the assessment of the bride. And then she gives a little bit of her own life story here. She says, I am very dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not gaze at me because I am dark, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. I haven't attended to myself, maybe even to my own appearance in some ways. Why? Because I was in this family where it seems like uh, there, there are issues here that have made me feel in some ways inferior. And in that context, the, the voice of her husband is going to make a great difference in terms of healing and helping her to think rightly. Tell me, she says, tell me, you whom my soul loves, where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. For why should I be like one who veils herself besides, beside the flocks of your companions? In other words, I, I want you. I want to be near you. Now he speaks. Listen to this. This is key. If you do not know, O oh, most beautiful among women, follow in the tracks of the flock and pasture your young goats beside the shepherd's tents. I compare you, my love, to a mare among Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments, your neck with strings of jewels. So this is a great word to her. And the others agree, we will make for you ornaments of gold studded with silver. They're right alongside there. And she says, while the king was on his couch, my nard gave forth its fragrance. There's uh, 
a, an aroma here of beauty. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards of En Gedi. It's very natural, beautiful language here. And he says, behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. And she responds, behold, you are beautiful, my beloved. Truly delightful. Our couch is green. The beams of our house are cedar. Our rafters are pine. So this is wonderful. And you know what? The church needs to hear this good word from Christ. You are beautiful, my love. And wives need to hear that. Uh, from their husbands as well. Father, thank you so much for the voice of our King, our, our beloved Jesus, who has told us wonderful things about our destiny. And this, this gives us hope. We're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.